two frats, both alike in dignity, in fair Verbrona, where we lay our scene. From ancient beef breaks new beef, when bros take one for true love's team. From forth the fatal loins of these two bros. Nice cock! Close homies take their life. When brothers turn to wayward hoes, then two opposing squads shall wife. The passage of their fatal homieship, the Kappas, the Omtau Muse, both to suffer, locked in a battle not could remove in denying love for one another. Those with patient ears shall hear the death-marked fate, the tale of two brotherhoods recapitulate. How now, my fair bro? How dost thou? Dost thou pump thy fist at me? My dude, I totally doth not. Dost thou wanna go? Honestly, bro, I truly doth. Dost thou even lift, bro? Hell yeah, I doth. Thy mother is a wanton strumpet. Well, thy mother is a hasty witted dewberry. What? Thy mother is a toad spotted nut hook. Thy mother is a shard boned liberty gibbet. Your mom's a hoe. Your mom's a bitch. Whoa, cool your jets, bros. What doth be poppin'? Thy home slice hath vexed me for the last time. Why canst thou calm thy tits? I would if thou weren't such a persnickety bitch. I do implore thee to put a sock in it. It is high time that thine brotherhoods of Kappa Lambda Eta and Omicron Taumu retired their differences and retired thee to thine closets. <laughs> Why? Why dost thou make my job so difficult? Because our enmity transcends all comprehension in both heaven and on this mortal coil, bro. Your speech transcends comprehension. What the fuck did you just say? He's a real pain in the ass. God. <sighs> Whatever, man. Have you seen Bromeo around? Why dost thou ask? Because he hath custody of my bong. Shit, bruh. Yeah, I have seen him. Yester Eve. Yo! Hey, what bro! Is up? Up? What's up? Romeo, bro! Hey, what's up? Where's my bong? Oh, uh, shit. I left it back at the frat house, but I will totally get it to you soon. No sweat. How's it hanging? Well, uh... Oh, I know that look. Bill, brother. Well, I've been on Tinder lately, right? Yeah? So, we were gonna go get some sweet za tonight, right? Ew. Yeah, I met this- their name is Brosalind. <sighs> Bros. I think I'm in love. For real this time. But, they've been like totally ghosting me, which is not cool. That's tragic, bro. Bro. Actually, didn't you see? They just sent the link to the uh, to the camaraderie contract thing. Oh? You totally fill it out and forget about Broslyn. It's like supposed to tell you who your true homie is, like for life. For life? Well, shit, dude, drop me the link. There you go. Thank you. Thou yeasty, naughty, padded gudgeon. Thou bootless, naughty pig. Thou overwhelming, thou abominable, odiferous stench. Thou saucy, callous-faced, worthless. Thou raven, beetle-headed, old bread. Bitch. Said order. Presently, we attend to the agenda. First order of business. Thou must cease mailing thy secretions to the opposing brotherhood. But alas, Omicron Tau Mew hath thrown the first booger. In the midst of the plague, thou must resolve thy differences in the interest of public health. You foul breathed Kappas hath terrorized their brotherhood with substances far worse than boogers. Well, you Om Tau Mews fucking suck. Silent. I shall exile thee both to thy breakout rooms to work out thy differences. Oh, 
Oh shit. He doth teach the torches to burn bright. Nice games, bro. Bro, thou doth kind of remind me of a summer's day, bro. Because thou art hot. I have felt the vibes between us and deemed them impeccable. Then pray, bro, let us unite on the snap so that we may continue these vibes indefinitely. Oh, thou art kind, but alas, I await my true homie on the com camaraderie contract. A shame as it is, for I ne'er saw true bromance till this night. I'm talking ne'er. The notification arriveth. Romeo, before I unseal this document and in turn my fate, I pray you know that I only dream my match be as exquisite as you. <gasps> Fair dude, Liette, it seems we are bound together by the camaraderie contracts. Romeo, thou art mine homie? Not only my homie, but my one true homie? Dude. But you're a Kappa. And you're an Omicron. My only homie sprung from my only hate? I must excuse myself and ponder upon my fate. Wait. <sighs> oh. We have congregated once more. Uh, where's Dude Liet? Dude Liet hath dipped promptly. And where had the Mercutio gone? Wouldn't you like to know, weather boy? What hast thou done to my home slice? <laughs> Mercutio has been slain, and he hath exited the chat. That is it, fiend. My bro shall not be trifled with by scum like you. I challenge thee to Pong. No. Not Pong, please. I implore of thee, do not. I must avenge mine bro. Bring it, you logger-headed. Rude growing. Baggage. Bitch. Bitch. We all note the perils of a Pong duel. Once thou hast cast thine ball, thou canst not return it. And once thou loseth, thou art the loser. The loser. The loser doth be dead. Dead. Shall we begin, bro? We shall, knave. Thou throwest like a tottering fool. Thine skill is but prop and scum. Thy face is but a foul lump of deformity. Ha! Suck it! Oh, Suck it! I am slain! Ugh. Romeo, yep. thou art exiled from all fraternity activities. You've broken the sacred commandment of not killing a bro. No. <laughs> Get wrecked, bro. Uh. Poor Sue, these vibes are unknown to me. I do hold him in my heart, yet I cannot trespass the holy order of the Brotherhood. To bro or not to bro, that is the question which doth ram itself into the crevices of my noggin. My friends and countrymen, or my love, my dear home slights, who hath pinged his final palm, or my love, whose eyes doth plague the most secret chambers of my heart? I stand still for fear of that great precipice from which I must yeet myself off of, or walk away from forevermore. Do I dare venture into that unknown country which beckons me so? Nay, I cannot even. Here I shall remain amidst the swarms of wanton scrumpets. I cannot stray into the arms of them whose name is poison to my tongue. And yet, his gaze transcends the bounds of mere brotherhood, rendering all other home slices worthless in my eyes and heart. 
thy jump, dear Bromeo, beyond the precipice and into thy swole arms. I jump. But soft, what light through yonder iPhone breaks? It is a DM, and Juliet is the sender. But woe is me. The war between our brotherhoods rages on, despite the strength of our forbidden bromance. I do love thee, yet this unexpected fraternity has grown in the soil of hatred and chilled my heart to the very point of heebie-jeebies. Yet the sacred oaths that I took under the east arch in my skivvies must forever be held. Dudeliet, despite thy splendor, I cannot risk exile. These inauspicious stars do mock me. How I want thee, and how I wish thou couldst be mine. And send. Bromeo, Bromeo, wherefore art thou Bromeo? I, I don't know, dude, I just kind of am. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Why must you have rushed that den of heathens which keeps us apart like thus? Ah, oh, some other name. Wait. Bro, what's in a name anyway? I don't know, bro. I don't know. I mean, that which we call a natty light from any other name would taste as sweet. Hey, cheers, bro. Romeo, doff thy name on Tamu, and for thy name, take all myself. Well, shit, bro. Call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth? I shall never be Bromeo. I shall be Matt. <clears throat> I mean, I guess that's fine. So, uh, anyways, I know something you don't know. A worm? Yeah, yeah. You know Tybalt? Uh, duh, yes, I know Tybalt. He's my bro, bro. Well, uh, guess what? What? I killed him. <laughs> Homie? Please, Friar Ch Chad, you gotta help me out, bro. I'm in a real dilly of a pickle here, dude. Oh, shit, bro. Uh, what's poppin'? Bromeo frickin' killed Tilt! In Pong! Oh, like a that's... bitch! I was there. It was nasty as shit. Not at all more delicious. Not cash money. It was neither chill nor ill. You feel me. I thank you for your support, my dude. Anytime, bro. Hey, man, you must want to kill Bromeo. Yeah. You, know, you must uh, you must really hate him, huh? Yeah. Nah, bro, I'm just Josh, and I know you're trying to make that uh, two-back beast, am I right? I mean, yeah, he does kind of light my loins on fire, though. You should get that checked out, dude. Not like that. Not, not like that. Nah, man, I'm playing. Nah, man, you know, you know, it is the vibes of the vibes of the vibes, but you know, that's a that's a big risk for some good ass. Not good. Great. Ooh. Yeah, that's tough. I know. Bro, I, I think you know what you gotta do. Bro, are you thinking what I'm thinking? Bro, I think you know I am. You gotta have an open and honest- Fake my own death. What? Fake my own death. If my Kappa brethren think I've died, I can vibe with Bromeo like any time. And they won't be on my ass about hanging with the dude who straight up murdered Tibble. You know, in Palm. Dude, that is a flawless plan. Hell yeah! yeah. Mm. Bro! 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 I, th I thought you died. Nah, bro. Yesterday, I was a grave man. But today, I'm a rave man! <laughs> hey! Yo, what's this sitting here? No, bro, yeah. don't eat it! What do you mean, bro? It's like totally poisoned. The Kappas brought it over here after 
well, you know. I, I, I don't know, bro, what? You know, when their main homeboy went to the big pong game in the sky. Bro, what? Yeah, I, like, heard it from the lads at Beta Row that, like, Juliet was found dead this morning. So, like, why would the Kappas bring over Dip, you feel? Seems a little sus. Dude, Liet? But, but we were just DMing last night. Listen, man. I believe what I hear from Beta Row, bro. No. Yeah, man. Good riddance. That dude is gone. Thou... Thou wretched broski? Thou speakest of mabs, of raves, of pristine ass and cash money, bros, bros, friendship, camaraderie, all but fleeting shadows <laughs> under the cruel fingernails of fate, bro, gone with nary a trace. I cannot persist. I am nothing. Rocked back and forth and to and fro and bro by the fickle waves of consequence. One final bargain to encroaching death. Eyes look here last. Thus, with a crunch, I die. Wait, 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 wait. Don't eat that. It's poisoned. No dip, Sherlock. I came here to warn you. I saved your lives. I want something in return. A uh, switcheroo, if you will. I'm horny AF for Bronomio. I want him, and you can't stop me from having him. Bro. He's dead. Huh? Who's dead? Can you not see his pristine ass right there? Oh my fucking god, he fucking dead. <laughs> What the fuck? Dude, Liet? You f couldn't fucking help it, huh? You just had to get back at the hometown muse. You couldn't put aside your differences for one fucking minute after I died? And now Bromeo is actually dead because of your stupid pride. When will you learn? When will you learn that your actions have fucking consequences? I can't even call you homies anymore. You aren't my bros. Romeo, he was the only bro I ever truly had. And now he's gone because of this shitty little pissing contest and your inability to make a goddamn buffalo chicken dinner. I hope you're all proud of yourselves. And there you have it, my dudes. The tale is all this time. As the philosopher Socrates said, bros before hoes, but ancient proverbs may not always be a hunted. Your bros can always coexist with your hoes, and it is the folly of mankind to believe otherwise. Because after all, even if your bros don't get along with your hoes, they have one fundamental thing that they share. They are the recipients of your love. So cherish your hoes and cherish your bros, for never was there a story of more woe than this of Dudliet and his bro Neo. Dearly beloved, we gather here today to honor the life of Gertrude Milson Johnson. We give thanks for her life and ask God to bless her now that her time in this world has come to an end. For Gertrude, the journey is now beginning, but for us, there is loss, grief, and pain. Every one of us here has been affected, perhaps in small ways or perhaps in transformative ones by Gertrude. Her life mattered to us all. 
it is important for us to collectively acknowledge and accept that the world has fundamentally changed with her passing. We are all grieving. Life will not be the same, nor should it be. Together, let us open our hearts and commemorate the impact Gertrude had on us. I would now like to invite anyone who would like to share some remarks about Gertrude to do so at this time and remind everyone that we will be reading Gertrude's final will and testament at the end of this service. <clears throat> uh, if I may, I'd like to say a few words. Go ahead, my child. Uh, hi, I'm Courtney. Gertrude Milson Jensen was my mother. She was the woman who raised me, cared for me and nurtured me for 18 years. I like to think I know her better than anyone else. And she was, and she was a fucking bitch. My, my mom was a heartless, petty, egocentric, Mephistophelian, semi-delusional busybody. She was the bane of my fucking existence. And every day from the beginning of fifth grade to the end of my senior year, I prayed to the Virgin Mary to grant me an immaculate conception as the mother of the next Jesus Christ, just so I could have a reason to be out of the house. But my mother probably find a way to ruin that. <laughs> that stupid fucking slut could never let me have anything in my entire life. Nothing I did was ever good enough for that God awful whore. That stinking rat infested, bitch queen of hell, whose only purpose in life was to make me miserable enough to develop a substance abuse issue before I even got my first period. <laughs> Guess what, mom? <laughs> I won. I won, you old dry husk of fuck. I'm here, and you're a formaldehyde-filled brick of worm shit in your ugly ass Sunday best and your old lady blowjob lipstick. I'm here, and you're in hell, getting fucked by Pyramid Head and the Seven Deadly Dwarves. So rest in peace, you old evil hag. Who's too fat to be prom queen now, huh? Okay, who's next? Me. Okay, my turn. Um, I'm Jason Milson Johnson. My mom is Gertrude Milson Johnson. Or um, she was. I guess she's not anymore, though. Uh, but yeah, Gert was my mom, uh, and she was a pretty bad mom. Uh, like my sister said, pretty awful, sort of evil bitch lady. Uh, I remember this one time I had a game, like a pretty big game. Uh, I've been lacrosse, if you didn't know. But yeah, it was a pretty big game. Um, I was actually captain that year, led us in a six and four season. And at least until I got injured, because I threw out my knee. I also got hit by a car, which blew. But the year after, I still got to Michigan State. Theta, Delta, Kai. Woo, woo. But yeah, uh, my mom hit me with a car. Um, I was pretty bummed about it. Mostly because my guys were counting on me to take the lead. We actually ended up winning 10-3. But I was still in the hospital, so I'm pretty sure that was just a fluke. Um, also, my mom never actually apologized for ruining my season. But it's like, cool, because she's dead now. Which kind of makes up for it. I'm kind of pissed, though. Not going to lie. Why the old motherfucker have to get killed on a Friday? Which she knew that Saturdays were for the boys. Did you say get killed? <laughs> Gertie was my best friend. She and I grew up together. Just two little girls from a small town against the world. We were like sisters, utterly inseparable, completely devoted to each other. So much so that when we both had the good fortunes to meet the men of our dreams, we decided to share the most important day of our lives and take the next steps into the future together with a glorious double wedding. <laughs> and it was glorious. John quills on every table and a pinwheel tent in the most picturesque meadow imaginable. And the two of us. It was our little girl's dream come true. <laughs> Matching lace gowns and strings of pearls. Oh, our fiance is so strong and handsome and madly in love with us. 
it was the most wonderful wedding anyone could have imagined and the happiest day of my life. I was absolutely giddy by the time the wedding night came and ready to consummate my love with the man I planned to spend the rest of my life with. <laughs> Until I found Gertie on top of him. Her own husband was busy watching the door to make sure that no one disturbed them while well, my atrocious, vile, repugnant, serpentine best friend got fucked by my husband. It's not fair, really. Her marriage lasted 12 years. Mine lasted 12 hours. Even when her first husband died mysteriously, another one quickly took his place. And yet I remained a maid all these years, wallowing in my own loneliness. <clears throat> I suppose, though, there is some justice in this world. To reward my patience, God has allowed me to see you into the ground, and I thank him heartily for the privilege. So long, whore. Good Lord. Uh, um, now, um, is there anyone else? Just me. My name is Alice, and I was Mrs. Molson's Johnson's nurse these last few years, and I lived with her in her home, and I cared for her around the clock. And I spent more time with her before her death than anyone else here can say. Gertrude was a troubled woman, and seeing her in her final days helped me understand who she was as a person and what life she led. It may not have always been clear, but she had her reasons for doing what she did and for how she treated those closest to her. Gertrude was the kind of person uh, who, oh, who am I fucking kidding? She made my job living Hell, day in and day out. Nothing but constant insults, threats, and abuse. Human beings aren't supposed to go through conditions like that. No one can be sane when living with an evil bitch who drives them crazy. You would think that the person who keeps you alive daily is a person worthy of, you know, the most basic human dignity. But not to you, you hateful cow. You malevolent fucking scorched earth insufferable piece of human shit. You treated me like dirt. Well, guess where you're going to be napping until your dyed hair falls out of your liver-spotted head, you sack of bones, bitch. And you know what else? I'm glad you're dead. <laughs> you yeah, you honestly, she could burn in hell for all that hair. That is what I thought you'd say. Detective priest, private investigator. Wait, you're a priest and a detective? No, priest is my name. You're a priest named Priest? What? No, I'm not a priest. I'm just a detective. So why are you running a funeral? So I could reveal that Gertrude was, you, you say know... you're not a real priest. No, I'm not a fucking priest. I'm a detective. What's your first name? Detective. You're detective, detective, priest? Yes. Is there a problem? What if you had been like a veterinarian or something? Yeah, you really couldn't do any other job besides being a priest detective? I'm not a priest! Jeez, no need to yell. I'm a detective, and I'm here to fa find out who murdered Gertrude. Well, why didn't you say so? Why would someone want to kill Gertie? D didn't you all just admitted you hate her guts a minute ago? And that you, you know, prayed the old fucker would just die every night? Can you sure I said the old motherfucker? Because you know she was my mom. See, you all clearly had it out for her. <laughs> okay, saying you hate a bitch is not the same as saying you want to slip rat poison into her morning coffee when you go and visit her because you know she wouldn't even notice any change because half of her coffee is fucking creamer, anyways. Did you poison her coffee with rat poison? <laughs> what? No, why would you think that? No matter. I'll find out exactly what you did eventually. I'm going to question each of you until I get to the bottom of this murder. Why would we go through with that? We can just turn off our cameras and leave. Not if you want to hear Gertrude's well. That's holding us hostage. Not really. This is a murder investigation. Gertrude wasn't murdered. She just fell down the stairs again. Again? Well, the first time she broke her hip and had to get it replaced, 
this time she broke her neck and that's a little harder to get replaced. How did you know she broke her neck? Because her neck looked like, Jason, tilt your head to the side. More. Turn your head a little. Yeah, like that. Oh. Did, did you do the autopsy, Alice? No. Then how would you know that her neck was broken? I'm speculating. And were you there to watch Gertrude fall down the stairs? No, I, I came in the door after um, my break to find her there. Mm-hmm. And what time did you return from your break? Hold on, Father Priest, if I may. I'm, I'm not a priest, and my first name's Detective. Why did your parents hate you? What do you think you're doing, asking us all these questions? It's my job. I'm here to fight, figure out who murdered Ms. Milson Johnson. Mrs. Milson Johnson. What? She was widowed. Each of the three Mr. Milson Johnsons died in the same way on the same staircase. Each death learning from and improving from the last. Okay. Look, the point is I'm going to need to, uh, to question each of you to get this timeline right and bring Mrs. MJ's murderer to light. Hey, dude, don't call her MJ. She hated the Jackson 5. Jesus Christ, can we just focus here? Would a priest like yourself really be using the Lord's name in vain? I'm not a priest. No need to freak out. Anyway, that's not the point. I need to get on with the questioning. Miss Milson Johnson, you visited your mother on the morning of the day that she was found dead, uh, did you not? I did. Uh, Jason and I were on our bi-monthly visit to mom's and I think Alice had the day off. I see. So there were no witnesses in the house, correct? Witnesses to what, exactly? All in due time, Miss Milson Johnson. So your morning visit, can you describe what took place? Well, Jason and I arrived at our mom's at half past 10, maybe. Alice left right after we got there. My mom asked for her morning coffee, and so I went and got it for her. Her usual coffee? With a shitload of creamer? <laughs> Nothing else for my mother. Don't know what anybody needs that much fucking creamer in their coffee for, unless they're a psychopath, but she was. And anyways, I also heard Jason go upstairs to go to the bathroom when I was in the kitchen, and then I brought out her coffee, shit ton of creamer in included, and sat and talked with her for a while. Jason joined us at some point later. And then we left about half an hour before Alice was supposed to come back, just because it's all I could stomach of that evil wench. So half an hour before she was discovered dead, you mean? Exactly. So why are you accusing me of murdering her if I wasn't even in the house? And what exactly did you and the late Mrs. Milson Johnson talk about? <laughs> late? Oh, she was never late. That skink arrived early to everything, including to pick me up from the one and only date I could get in high school. That's like, not what, Never mind. Uh, what was your conversation about? Oh, just casual chit chat, you know, <laughs> the weather, my new job, her will, the game last night. Did you was say her will? Just a brief mention. It wasn't even really a topic, you know. Uh, hold up. I'm like, 84% certain that you screamed some shit about being left out of mom's will when I was upstairs with the sin. I mean, upstairs taking a massive shit, yeah. Ew. You heard yelling? Like, fuck you did. Yeah, Mr. Father Detective. I heard yelling from my bitch of a sister and my also bitch of a mom. Again, not an actual priest. You don't have to call me father. And what exactly do you think we were yelling about, brother fucking dearest? I didn't make out everything, but I could hear bits and pieces. Something like, blah, 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 my will. Something, something, never loved you anyway. Something about being a bitch, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, um, I also heard you yell, I'm gonna fucking kill you. Very interesting. And I think you mentioned something about like, 
plastic rhino. Oh, come on. You're not actually going to listen to this fuckhead's bullshit, are you? Even if this was true, none of it's actually incriminating. Okay, it's true. My mother and I were discussing her will. I'll give you that. But never loved you anyway. All that, that was in reference to Fluffy, her pet poodle. She, she said she wanted to leave something for Fluffy in her will, which I thought was so ridiculous. Guess that explains the bitch comment. And, and I never mentioned a plastic rhino. I mentioned a rhinoplasty, you dumbass. I was asking her for the millionth time if she would just help me pay for my nose job. She has more than enough funds, but the selfish bitch always kept her money to herself. But that doesn't prove I did anything. You said you were going to kill Gertie. That sounds pretty incriminating to me. And it was you who gave her the last thing she ever drank, didn't you? Oh, I'm sorry, Helen. Since when did you become a fucking detective? Helen, you seem rather caught up on that morning coffee. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. I only mentioned it once or twice. It was a part of her daily routine. I'm her oldest friend. I should know. Then you would be sure she would drink it. When was the last time you spoke to Gertie? Only her friends call her Gertie. Okay. So you can't. Okay, noted. And I saw her the night before, thank you very much. I just stopped by for an evening chat. An evening chat? What about? Well, nothing in particular. I'm an old maid. You can't expect me to remember everything. <laughs> well, that's funny because I can recall your conversation quite well. Alice, it's not polite to eavesdrop. I told her she should have fired you years ago. Weren't you also chatting about her will, Helen, and how it's only fair that you're in it, seeing as she's a backstabbing slut who stole your husband away from you all those years ago, and this was the least she could do to make it up to you? I don't believe those were my exact words. <laughs> yes, you did mention that before. How Gertrude supposedly stole your husband on your wedding night? He snatched him right out of my grasp. He and I were so in love, or so I thought, until I found that dirty, lying whore arched backwards on top of him in our own bed. And on our wedding night. It was a horrendous sight, and not just because it was my husband and my best friend. I swear I'll never forget as long as I live the sight of them handcuffed together. Okay, just... Jesus. <coughs> See you, I, lady. <coughs> Go on with slightly less graphic detail, if you would. Well, I was hurt, to say the least. She truly puts the bitch in obituary. But not so much as to cause me to resort to murdering her. And all these years later, nonetheless. I don't know, Mr. Father. Sounds like a pretty good motive to me. Hosts kill each other all the time over love, you know? Bitches be crazy. <laughs> It looks like your case is closed, and we don't need to talk about the cinder block above her bedroom door. First of all, I'm still not a priest, so please don't call me Mr. Father. Whatever you say, Father P.I. Still no. And second, did you say cinder block? Uh, no. I said we didn't need to talk about it. Okay, we are definitely coming back to that. So, Helen... You were with Gertrude the night before her murder. Can you run me through how the rest of the evening went? Well, uh, we chatted in her drawing room for a while. Then Alice took Gertie up to bed, 9.23 on the dot. She's very particular like that. Says it's her astrology number. Some shit about getting rid of her husband's. Don't distract us, Alice. Uh, then what did you do? Well, before heading out, I stopped by the kitchen to make myself some tea, switched out her creamer with arsenic, I mean low sugar creamer, drove back on the I-95, made my- You switched out her creamer with what? A low sugar replacement. She has diabetes, Mr. Priest. I was just looking out for her. Please, Mr. Priest was my father. You can call me detective. And I'm pretty sure you said arsenic a moment ago. Oh, well, that was a Freudian slip. That's not what a Freudian slip is. How would you know? Um, because I went to college, you crusty old bitch. What are you, Phoenix? Fuck's wrong with that. Everything. Okay, thank you, Helen. That's enough. 
I didn't kill my best friend, detective. I may hate that two-faced, depraved, backstabbing, narcissistic, beastly, loathsome old whore. But? That's it. Oh. Duly noted. Well, since Helen clearly poisoned Gertrude's coffee creamer with arsenic, I think we're done here and we can move on to the will. Don't jump to conclusions, nurse. Uh, I have a name. Which is? Alice Nurse. It's an old family name. <laughs> Your last name sucks. <laughs> Nason, didn't you mention something about a cinder block earlier? Uh, I have no clue what you're talking about. Um, who's Jason? What's a cinder block? Yeah, what were you doing upstairs the whole time I was poisoning? I, I mean, making coffee uh, for mom. I, I didn't hear you shout, Geronimo, or incoming, while shitting once, and you always do that. Yeah, well, what do you know about my bowel movement habits? <laughs> Way more than I ever wanted to know. What were you doing upstairs, Jason? Uh, stuff. Normal, non-cinder block related stuff. You sure do mention cinder blocks a lot for someone who claims to have nothing to do with them. Yeah, weird coincidence, because I, I certainly wasn't hiding one with my mom's bedroom door, so it would fall on her when she opened it that night and smush her annoying head so I was flat as a pancake, and she could just feel just as ran over as when she ran over me with her car, and I could get my rightful share from the will to pay for Clown Culinary College, and I could finally change my middle name without her looking at me with that I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed look. Because what kind of name is Fatimir anyway? Oh. I'm sorry. Your middle name is Fatimir. You want to go to Clown Culinary College? So you did put a cinder block above her door to kill her. What does it matter? She didn't even open the door he put the cinder block over anyways. She fell on the stairs before she ever got there. Oh, well shit. It would appear you're right, Miss Nurse. Could you remind me of what you were doing the last hours before your employer's demise? You did spend the most time with her. Ugh, well, it was pretty much the usual day. She cheated at Scrabble, Boggle, Yahtzee, Pictionary, Mahjong, Trivial Pursuit, and then Charades. So I do cheat at Charades. And then I gave her the usual medication. Helen came by and I made some adjustments or uh, repairs to the front staircase. And I cooked her a dinner of mashed potatoes and gefilte fish. Ew. And then I put her to bed and gave her her medication the next morning before the kids arrived. And when I came back, I discovered her with a broken neck on the front staircase. Wait, wasn't she on the back staircase? Very interesting. And nothing out of the ordinary happened prior to you discussing bring her body? No unusual conversations, fights? Well, I mean, the conversations were the usual. She was a real fucking bitch, you know? Day in and day out. She never said please or thank you, not once. She would scold me for the most insignificant things, things I couldn't even control. Once, she threatened to fire me because I couldn't stop the neighbor's dog from barking. Like, how would I have done that? And she was constantly rude, always commenting on my appearance and my personal life. She was really just a bitch to me. So your relationship with Mrs. Milson Johnson wasn't the best then? The best? Detective, I really hate to say it, but I could not be happier that that horrible, human-shaped monster is six feet underground. That sounds like a fucking motive to me. Oh, well, don't act like you didn't feel the same way about her. You were all overjoyed when we got the news that the witch kicked the bucket. How dare you? She was my mother. And an absolute scumbag. We you all admitted it. We hated her guts. What did her guts ever do to you? I just told you, dumbass. Right. The evidence is clear. There's no other explanation. All of you had the motive, and all of you had the means. Which means only one thing. All of you murdered Gertrude Milson Johnson. 
Oh, please. How could you ever come to that ridiculous conclusion? Let me explain. It all began the day before her tragic death. Your visit, Helen. Me? Oh, please. Why would I murder my best friend? <laughs> so glad you asked. Feeling revengeful after your conversation about your fiancé, and certain of your inheritance after Gertrude's confirmation that she would include you in her will, you switched out her beloved coffee creamer with arsenic, knowing she would pour a shit ton of it into her morning coffee. That same night, after Gertrude spat out her rude comments to Alice, topping off all her pent up frustrations with her job as Gertrude's nurse, she rigged the front stairs in the hopes that she would fall into her trap the next morning. My job was to take care of Gertrude. Why would I kill her? A perfect alibi, it seems. Well, it's not like you were planning on getting caught, knowing that the day she died would also be your day off. Maybe you were even planning to frame her children. Not that you needed to, since they were feeling just as murderous. Courtney made her mother's morning coffee, replacing her coffee creamer with arsenic, in the hopes that she would get the money for her rhinoplasty from her mother's will. Oh, please. I... The same, the same beloved creamer that had already been tampered with by Helen. What an unfortunate coincidence that the arsenic bottle that was really full of the creamer Helen had already switched out in the hopes that it would kill her backstabbing best friend. And... Jason, of course, just put a cinder block on top of Gertrude's bedroom door, which she never opened. To be fair, it was a good idea in my head. Your head is hollow, Jason. There's nothing in there. Well, it seems everything falls into place. What do you all have to say for yourselves? That none of them are guilty. I just received the report from the coroner and she died of a broken neck. Nothing more. She fell down my rigged front staircase and died. It was all me. Wait, front staircase? But she was discovered at the back staircase. It couldn't have been your trap. And we all fail? The old bitch really just got what was coming for her. She didn't need our tricks at all. So, it wasn't actually a murder? I was wrong? It seems so, Father Detective. Hey, now you can go back to your job as a priest. Again, I'm not a priest, just a detective. A really disappointed detective. Well, we might as well read the will. Right. Let's see. To my children, Courtney and Jason Milson Johnson, my friend, Helen Smithsman, and my nurse, Alice Nurse, I leave. Hmm. Well? Oh, one dollar each. The rest of my fortune, my house, and my priceless antique china goes to Fluffy, my beloved poodle. Oh, what? No. How am I going to pay for Clown for all the dollars. My name can I, still I, be I bad her, I talked her into bed. I gave her it's bed time. It's 2.30. I lost track of time. Sorry for the inconvenience, everyone, but I need you off this call. My next client will be arriving any minute for their zaptism. Zaptism? Zoom baptism. What else? Did you say you weren't a priest? 